morning and welcome to the 107th commencement of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. The commencement will begin with an introduction from the President and CEO of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, Dr. Wendy Rowe. Hello, I'm Dr. Wendy Rowe, President and CEO of Rosalind Franklin University. Welcome to our 107th commencement ceremony. We gather today around a virtual stage to celebrate our graduates as they prepare to enter fields in need of their energy and expertise. For the second consecutive year, commencement arrives amid a pandemic that our nation and world is still struggling to bring under control. You, graduates, will have a hand in making that happen. RFU has prepared you for this challenge as you join teams that work across disciplines to defeat COVID-19 and advanced systems of care and biomedical research. Wherever your vocation takes you, the communities you serve will look to you for guidance. I encourage you to have faith in your abilities and to seize opportunities. RFU has provided you with the training you need to help lead our post-pandemic future, which demands health equity and improved wellness across all populations. On behalf of our entire university community, let me say how very proud I am of each and every one of you. Congratulations. Good morning, graduates. I am Dr. Nancy Parsley, Provost of Rosalind Franklin University. It is my great pleasure to welcome you, your families and friends, and our RFU community to this year's commencement. We wish you every success as you enter the professional lives you have worked so hard to attain. As I look back over events of the past year, I admire your strength and tenacity and the empathy you have shown each other and those in your care. Your resilience has been an inspiration. You also demonstrated how we must nurture the relationships that sustain us, especially in times of hardship and challenge. I invite you to stay connected to the classmates and mentors whose care and friendship help bring you to this moment. Never forget that Rosalind Franklin University and our network of more than 20,000 alumni stand behind you and believe in you. Again, congratulations on all that you have accomplished. I now have the pleasure of introducing our 2021 graduate speaker. We are proud to continue a tradition that incorporates an address by a current graduate. Please welcome Kenneth Furlow, a graduating student from the Chicago Medical School. When we started this healthcare journey, who knew that the culmination of our formal educational careers will be centered around the constant adaptation to change and a vision to see things through. For that, I say congratulations to the class of 2021. Committing oneself to a life centered around learning and placing another person's life at the forefront is no easy feat. In consideration of the comprehensive nature of our education at Rosalind Franklin University, I firmly believe that we are equipped, prepared, and ready for what is to come in the months ahead of us. We are entering a healthcare space where socioeconomic determinants negatively impact health outcomes and healthcare delivery models lack value. Despite these challenges, I firmly believe that our interprofessional education allows us to understand the multifaceted nature of healthcare delivery and consequently develop comprehensive strategies to improve outcomes and increase value. Remaining focused on our studies while adjusting to the constant changes of a world in a pandemic illustrates our resilience and purposeful perspective. This pandemic highlighted the inequities that exist in our communities and the need of healthcare teams that understood the importance for how a clinical evaluation and treatment plan must extend beyond the four walls of any clinical setting and into the communities where our patients predominantly reside. With respect to this reality, who else other then a graduate in class of 2021 is prepared to meet this challenge and raise the standard of care. Reflecting on the path that brought me here today, my journey in medicine started before I applied to any medical school. Before I started gathering patient histories in a short white coat, I was mentoring students at Chicago Public Schools 
and developing educational plans to improve their grades. Before I was handed the tin blade in the OR, I was a nine-year-old kid on the south side of Chicago, dissecting insects with a dull scalpel while using my front porch as an operating room table. Before establishing a nonprofit organization centered around financial literacy, career development, and wellness, I saw my community how social determinants impact the health outcomes and differences in life expectancy. And lastly, before being the first clinician in my family as an orthopedic surgeon, I was a student athlete at Georgetown University who persevered despite the challenges of balancing a pre-medical curriculum while trying to be the best football player I could become. Despite the differences in life experiences that we all have, each of our journeys leading to our graduation day is a product of challenges overcame and lessons learned. So as we continue to embark on this journey, despite the unforeseen challenges, through the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Regardless of what we will face in the days to come, we are fortunate to live in a period of history where change is commonplace and authenticity is respected. So therefore, what better a time to exist to become innovators and the builders of equity in order to promote a healthcare system built upon justice and helps people live fulfillingly. So those times when we doubt ourselves as young health professionals in a new environment, stay focused and take the first step. When we come across patients with complex social histories, approach them as a person with empathy and then take the first step. When we come across challenges in relation to clinical procedures and medical approaches, take the first step with the implementation of research and quality improvement projects. And lastly, when those moments arise, when life presents you with a heavy challenge to bear, reflect on what you have been through, and most importantly, who you are, and then take the first step. Because on that day with either a scalpel in your hand, a stethoscope in your ear, or a patient's chart in your computer screen, after taking one step after another in your personal journey, you would have eventually built upon flights of stairs that generations after you will learn from, build upon, and stand on. Therefore, whatever is to happen in our futures after this day, be comforted with knowing that with humility and commitment to excellence, our steps are the building blocks to make this world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. It is my privilege on behalf of Rosalind Franklin University to confer upon Dr. Ngozi Aziki an honorary degree in recognition of her distinguished career in medicine and public health system leadership. She's a board certified internist and pediatrician who has served at the helm of several health systems, including her current duties as director of the Illinois Department of Public Health. Dr. Aziki's guidance during the state's response to the COVID pandemic has demonstrated steadfast compassion and commitment to public well-being. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by the State of Illinois, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. To the Chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Elizabeth Colson, to the esteemed Board, President Wendy Rowe, faculty, administrators, students, parents, and friends of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, warmest greetings. And to the graduating class of 2021, for all the school and national exams you prepared for, the marathon study group sessions, the thousands of hours of lectures you sat through, through anatomy lab, clinical rotations, with such early morning rounding and pre-rounding that it was sometimes better not even to go to sleep for fear of not waking up on time. You did all that was asked of you and more so that you could arrive at this point. And I, although I've never had the pleasure of meeting any of you personally, I am blessed 
with the honor of being a part of today's ceremony. Though I wasn't physically with you over the last four years, trust me when I tell you I understand what you've been through and I fully acknowledge the extra challenges that this last year and a half have tendered. I humbly thank Chairman Colson and President Rowe for their gracious invitation to be a part of today's ceremony. Thank you, President Rowe, for your leadership and support of this institution and its students, and by extension, your stewardship of the integrity, professionalism, and ethical standards of my beloved profession. Being afforded this opportunity to speak before you is an honor, and I acknowledge that this opportunity was made possible because I serve as the captain of the amazing, incredible team at the Illinois Department of Public Health, a team that works tirelessly all the time, even before COVID year 2020, working to protect the people of Illinois and to support every Illinoisan in achieving his or her very best health. And yes, a global pandemic put what used to be lots of behind the scenes effort in full view for the entire state to behold. But in 2019 BC, before COVID, a newly elected politician, Governor J.B. Pritzker, an ardent champion for diversity, equity, and inclusion, gave me the greatest opportunity of my career in appointing me as the second woman ever and the first woman of color, the first black woman to ever hold the position of director of IDPH from over its 150 year history. In all honesty, it's been nerve wracking preparing to address you. It's totally different from COVID press conferences. So before I share the few nuggets I came up with, let me offer a few accolades to some other special groups outside of the graduates. To the administrators and faculty, congratulations on another successful year of staying true to the mission of Rosalind Franklin University, serving humanity through the interprofessional education of health and biomedical professionals, and guiding the discovery of knowledge dedicated to improving wellness, despite the social, political, and health upheaval we all bore witness to in the past year. Given the century plus history of this institution, the merging of colleges, advocating for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the development and training of healthcare professionals, the act of recognizing the contributions of a pioneering woman scientist forced to work in a time when she was barely valued and definitely not respected. By naming this institution in her honor and standing for what is right, even when it isn't popular, you have made the practice of following that arc of the moral universe that Dr. King spoke of, one of the trademark pillars of this institution. And not just this branch of the academy, but our state and our world are better places because of your stance. And to you, parents, congratulations. This moment is your reward for all the years and all the tears. For some of you, your graduate is following in your footsteps. For others, this is the first doctor ever in the family. Whatever the case is, I know how important family support has been in getting your graduate through to this end. So this is your moment too, and I salute you as well on this momentous achievement. And back to the stars of the day. Again, congratulations for achieving your dreams in the midst of a global pandemic. I applaud each of you for not losing sight of your goals despite the chaos and the uncertainty and the darkness we were all navigating in during this ongoing mass casualty traumatic event of the last 17 months. There is a popular declaration written by Brianne James. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. I cannot think of a better line to capture the spirit of this class, where more than a third are people of color and 56% are women. Hello, sisters. 
You are the embodiment of Rosalind's wildest dreams. I have so many things that I want to share, but the time is limited, so I wanted to focus on just a few things. I was going to start with, quote, there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going. And I said, mm, delete that. Anyone pursuing the path of medicine is exactly the opposite of someone looking for a quick fix or a quick win or immediate gratification. So no, I think I want to share some lessons learned or rather highlighted during the two pandemics that exploded during your medical school tenure. The importance of communication. Communication is the exchange or imparting of information. Simple communication just means, here's something I wanna share, I'm giving it to you. But if you actually change it up and talk about effective communication, now we're talking about a whole new situation. Communication is to effective communication as a drone delivery of eggs from 30 feet in the air is to a driver delivering and handing the recipient at the door their carton of eggs. Effective communication ensures that what was intended to be shared was actually received as intended by engaging in a dialogue and real conversation and ensuring that the right message was conveyed. So just dropping a message versus ensuring that the message you dropped was in fact picked up is the difference between simply communicating and effectively communicating. I'd also like to touch on another important lesson and a part of a recent pandemic of sorts is confronting unconscious and implicit bias. I know some of you are saying, oh no, do we have to talk about racism? If you're tired of talking about racism, I invite you to think for a moment about how tired people who deal with racism and its effects every day. It's an ongoing pandemic that requires all of us to control and end it. So how can we be an anti-racist community? It starts with us all educating ourselves on the history of racism in this country. I encourage all of us to challenge notions that demote one race or culture under another. Let me share an encounter that I experienced when I was in med school some <coughs> 20 years ago. Uh, I was on a clinical rotation in my third year and there was a lecture series that occurred in the evening uh, with different uh, attending physicians. I remember signing out with my senior resident uh, and my intern and then proceeding to the conference room in the hospital where the lecture would occur. Being the kind of student that actually prefers to sit in the front, um, I took a seat in the front row uh, to, the, to the left, uh, to the right of center. And I, I sat there and people were coming into the conference room and waiting for the attending to show up. And he did, and he introduced himself, and then he launched into a, a case presentation uh, and said that he wanted everyone to actively participate. And so as they presented the case, they wanted the students to think about what additional history questions would you ask? You know, what uh, would you ask? What would you be looking for on the physical? You know, it delved into what the what's on the differential diagnosis, you, you know that drill. And so he went around the room asking every participant to uh, answer some of these questions. And so being in the front row, uh, I didn't think much of it when it started first with another person uh, more to the center, but then went around the entire room and actually we made it around the room again. And so I, I just continued to sit in my seat uh, absorbing, absorbing, you know, the facts of the case, but also thinking, why didn't I get to participate in this exercise? At the end of the lecture, I waited till all the other students had finished asking their questions, and I mustered up the courage to ask the professor 
why I was not called on to participate in the discussion. And he looked at me and said, I, I didn't realize you were one of the students. So I, I bring this up to just remind you that all of our actions have reactions that follow it. And there are consequences to the actions that we engage in. So I'm not trying to talk about victimhood, but I just address you with common sense to understand how implicit bias, unconscious bias, can very adversely affect our peers, our friends, our patients uh, in very significant ways. Finally, I encourage you to take care of yourself and bring your humanity to work. I have learned and am still learning that change, even in the midst of a crisis, can take a personal toll on you and that prioritizing time for self-care is as critical as prioritizing the issues and tasks in the moment. The intense pressure from all sides surpass anything that my team in public health has ever experienced. Across our field, across the nation, some people walked away from their roles, many were forced out of their roles, others doubled down and have been stretched more than the most elastic rubber band has ever been stretched. Some of us had the help and support needed to endure. Some of us needed professional help beyond that to get through. And then some of us, one of us, had an unscripted public cry in front of a row of live cameras, which ended up being broadcast over and over around the world. And at that time, it was not my proudest moment. In fact, it, I was horrified. But now, seven months later, it stands as that seminal moment that best defines just who I am. A caring mother, wife, daughter, physician, and leader. The lesson was and remains that we can bring our humanity to all the work we do. You don't have to check it in at the door. And so it may make things complicated, definitely more colorful and 100% authentic. That incident was pivotal for me. It made an impact on me as I found out that millions of other people wanted that humanity to be displayed. Your patients want to know that you're a real person and that you care and that you feel just like they do. Medicine will cause you to give of your physical time, but also pull on your heart. And showing empathy and care for your patients can and will take a toll. So you do have to take time to decompress, to recalibrate, and even reprioritize. Having exhausted your energies and reserves will leave you with very little to draw upon as you try to serve others. So find what restores you and make time, even as an overworked intern, make time to refill and refresh your cup. You have now earned yourself a position of great esteem and it's an incredible honor and a privilege and you need to guard it appropriately. So go forth, graduates of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. You are our wildest dreams, and we are so proud of you. Be an effective communicator, show compassion, and educate yourself on the history of racism. Challenge internal and external notions that lessen people of certain races and cultures. Be curious, be a lifelong learner, be dedicated to improving wellness. And may every place you venture into find itself better off for your having been there. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you Godspeed on your journey. Thank you, Dr. Aziki, for your inspiring address 
and for all that you and the state have done to help us navigate this pandemic. We look forward to a brighter, healthier, and more equitable future. It is now my great honor and pleasure to begin the conferral of degrees for our candidates. With the approval of the Board of Trustees of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, and pursuant to the authority granted by the State of Illinois, I authorize the conferral of appropriate academic degrees upon the graduating class of 2021 for the School of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, the College of Health Professions, the Dr. William M. Scholl College of Podiatric Medicine, the Chicago Medical School, and the College of Pharmacy. President Rowe, faculty and honored guests and loved ones, I hereby announce the commencement of the College of Health Professions. President Rowe, faculty and honored guests and loved ones, the students listed in the program for the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy have satisfactorily fulfilled the requirements of the College of Health Professions and have successfully completed their final examinations. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty, I present them for the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy. Graduates will be recognized by Dr. Kavork Agopian, Assistant Professor in the Department of Physical Therapy. Dr. Alyssa Esperanza Arroyo. Dr. Kathleen Elizabeth Beckovin. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Benish. <laughs> Dr. Timothy R. Byron. Dr. Megan Claire Brinkerhoff. Dr. Curtis Thomas Birds. Dr. Brody Hansen Burkhart. <laughs> Dr. Michael Chan. Dr. Natalia Chihosh. <laughs> Dr. Julie Francis Cook. <laughs> Dr. James Cravens. Dr. Peyton T. Cummings. Dr. Anna Jennifer Silwick. Dr. Daniel Alberto Dagnino. <laughs> Dr. Cyrus Emmanuel Sang Dolroy.
Dr. Annette M. Slingo. Dr. Celine Emery. Dr. Ronald Allen Baelos Estrada. Dr. Jennifer A. Gideon. Dr. Brianna J. Gross. Dr. Alicia Nicole Guidry. Dr. Ian P. Gwaltney. Dr. Lauren Michelle Hickson. Dr. Abigail Hill. Dr. Olivia Hannah Jones. Dr. Ilya Kadushin. Dr. Alicia C. Kalaik. Dr. Michelle M. Coker. Dr. Joshua M. Kuntz. Dr. Hannah M. Lasky. Dr. Mary C. McLaughlin. Dr. Casey Patrick McNamara. Dr. Aaron Elena McNulty. Dr. Nicholas J. Mizorowski. Dr. Kyle L. Negengard.
Dr. Keegan M. Nichols. Dr. Jedediah Nulud. <laughs> Dr. Rachel Annette O'Donnell. Dr. Kristen Olson. Dr. Colin T. Oltman. Dr. Beth. Rosemary Papke. <laughs> Dr. Ashini Patel. Dr. Matthew T. Perrick. <laughs> Dr. Kayla Renee Reichert. <laughs> Dr. Sharon. T. Richardson. <laughs> Dr. Melissa M. Richter. Dr. Devra Sheldon. <laughs> Dr. David Jesse Surant. Dr. Ryan Smurz. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Geneva Stenkowski. Dr. Annie Mariah Trella. <laughs> Dr. Caitlin Urich. <laughs> Dr. Alana Varnas. <laughs> Dr. Gina M. Veit. Dr. Julia Lorraine Volk. Dr. 
Dr. Rachel Westlow. Dr. Lauren Elizabeth White. Dr. David Terry Wilson. Dr. Brianna Leslie Zabarek. Dr. Nina Suzanne Zadonowitz. Clinical graduates of the College of Health Professions will now recite the Oath of Geneva with their interprofessional colleagues from Rosalind Franklin University. As a member of a healthcare profession, as a member of a healthcare profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability. Creed, ethnic origin, gender, or gender identity. Creed, ethnic origin. Gender or gender identity. Nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation. Nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation. Socioeconomic status or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided to me, even after the patient has died. I will respect the secrets that are confided to me, even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good practice. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of my profession. I will give my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will not use my knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. The trustees and faculty of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science and all of our graduates join me in honoring their families and friends here today. While you no doubt feel great pride for all that your loved ones have accomplished, please do take a moment to acknowledge your own success, for the role you played in helping them to realize their goals, for the personal sacrifices you have made along the way and the support you have given. We thank you and honor you with our applause. 
At this time, I am pleased to introduce the awards for the College of Health Professions. Announcing the awards is Dr. Jeffrey Damaschke, Co-Director of Student Affairs in the College of Health Professions. The John and Janet Vanek Memorial Benevolence Award was established in memory of John Vanek, physical therapy class of 1999, and later his mother, Janet, an alumna from the class of 1985 and longtime faculty member and department chair in the College of Health Professions. This award honors a graduating College of Health Professions student who has demonstrated the qualities of professionalism, perseverance, and humanism. This year, the student that best exemplifies these qualities is Kyle L. Negengard. The College of Health Professions Dean's Award for Scholarship is presented to the graduating students in each department with the highest grade point average. This year, we award Kyle L. Negengard, Rachel Weslow, Olivia Hannah Jones, Mary C. McLaughlin, Joshua M. Kuntz. The Michael E. Kordecki Physical Therapy Excellence in Anatomy Award recognizes third-year Doctor of Physical Therapy students who have demonstrated outstanding academic and laboratory performance and passion for learning and teaching anatomy to others. The recipients of this award are Joshua M. Kuntz and Kyle L. Negengard. The College of Health Professions Clinical Education Award is presented to a graduating student in each department for outstanding performance in the clinical training site. This year we award Aaron McNulty. The Carrie Ann Gustafson Memorial Award honors the memory of a young woman in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program who died suddenly and unexpectedly in 2010. Carrie had a special gift and character that would have made her an extraordinary physical therapist. Her family, friends, and colleagues established this award in her name to recognize students in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program who exemplify her dedication and determination to become a physical therapist, and as such, to serve others. The Carrie Ann Gustafson Memorial Award is awarded to Brittany Griggers and Yvette Ramirez. The Virginia Daniel Physical Therapy Award is named after the founding chair of the Department of Physical Therapy. The scholarship is a monetary award presented to two students in the physical therapy program based upon scholarship, university service, and financial need. They are Timothy J. Furland and Katherine Harris. The Department of Physical Therapy Post-Professional Doctor of Physical Therapy Award for Academic Excellence and Leadership is presented to a graduating student for outstanding performance in the Post-Professional Physical Therapy Program. This year's award is given to Annette M. Slingo. We also honor the members of the American Council of Academic Physical Therapy National Physical Therapy Student Honor Society. Their names are listed in the program. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates. It brings me great joy to be able to share this special day with you, your family, and your friends to celebrate your accomplishments. The world you are graduating into today looks much different than the way it looked when you started your studies. And our world is in need of the knowledge and skills you've acquired during your time in school more now than ever. As clinicians with graduate health science degrees, you've learned not only how to care for your patients, but you've also learned why you care for your patients. For many of you, this has been a lifelong journey to use your talents and skills in the service of humanity to relieve suffering, to comfort those in need, and to bear witness to the human condition. You have dedicated yourselves to a life of service to others, and there is no more noble calling or tradition than this. It is my great honor to share this day with all of you and my sincere congratulations. I just wanna make a shout out to everybody that's helped me on this journey, mom and dad. 
Thanks so much for helping me through this. I just want to thank everyone who helped me to get to this point, especially my parents who always supported me, and to Anton and Margaret and Michael and everyone else who was able to participate in this with me. Thank you. I'd like to thank my parents, uh, the rest of my family, my sister, uh, her new husband, all the friends and colleagues I've made here who've helped me along the way, and myself. It was a hard, long process and I stuck with it. Thank you. I just want to thank my family, my fiance, and all my friends that have helped me through this entire journey. It's been a long process, so I love you all. Thanks. Thanks, Mom and Dad, Sid, any family and friends that helped me along the way. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you. I just want to thank my mom, Marla, my dad, Brian, my brother, Chase, my grandparents, uh, my family and friends, my professors, my, um, my clinicians, and my CIs, and anybody else who's helped me along this way. Thank you. I just want to thank my family, my girlfriend Hannah, all my friends and all the professors who helped me along the way. I love all of you. I would like to thank my family, friends, and the faculty of the Rosalind Franklin University. I couldn't have done this without all of your help and I really appreciate and love all of you. I just want to give a quick thank you to my parents, my brothers, uh, all my other friends, my classmates, and the faculty here at RFUMS. It's been an awesome journey. I would just like to thank my family for supporting me over these past few years and the faculty and class here at Rosalind Franklin. It's been a great experience, so thank you. Uh, I just wanted to thank my family and my friends for the past few years. I couldn't have done it without you guys and I wanted to give a quick shout out to the faculty and all my classmates. It's been awesome. Thanks to my family and friends for all the support. Gracias a todos, mi, mi familia, mis amigos, por todo el amor y el apoyo. Uh, it's been one hell of a ride. First of all, I would like to thank God for showing me the way uh, and also thank my parents for paving me the pathway and also thank my wife for being with me along the way. Thank you. Hi, I'd like to thank the staff of Roslyn Franklin, the staff at Rush University Medical Center, my family and my friends for all the support the past two years. I would like to thank my friends and my family and all the faculty here at Roslyn Franklin for supporting me through these three years. Thank you. Shout out to my parents and my fiance, almost husband, for uh, getting me through these three years. It's been such a long ride, but we're here. Woo! Thank you to all of my friends and family for supporting me through these past three years. It's been challenging, but I'm so excited to get started as a doctor of physical therapy. Um, I'd like to thank my family, my friends, and the Rosalind Franklin faculty for all the love and support. Um, thank you for allowing me to make lifelong friendships and to the opportunity to pursue my passion. I'd like to thank my girlfriend, Megan, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, and my nephew, Jackson. Thank you guys for supporting me, and uh, we made it. I just want to say thank you to my fiance, Garrett, and my parents, and all my girls for all the love and support, and I really appreciate you guys. I'd like to thank my girlfriend, Colleen, my parents, Colleen's family, and the faculty at RFUMS for all their help and support. Give a shout out to my family, friends, everyone here at RFU, and faculty. Thank you for all your help and support, and definitely mom and dad. Thanks. I want to thank my parents, my sister Kelly, my fiance Matt, and all the students I'm graduating with at RFU. I'd like to thank all my family, friends, my talented classmates, the faculty, last but not least, all the WASH squad back in Navy House. I want to thank, I'm grateful for my friends, my family, and all my mentors along the way. I want to give a shout out also to all my amazing classmates here at RFU as, long, as well as the faculty. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank my wife, Valerie, uh, my parents, Kevin and Michael Ann, and then my in-laws, also Mike and Kathy. Thank you for supporting me through this. My wonderful faculty and friends here at RFU, and now my colleagues. I uh, definitely want to thank God and especially right now my wife Jocelyn and my family for supporting me throughout this whole process. Uh, thank you so much. Hi everyone, I just want to say thank you for being there for me, especially my classmates, family, and friends. And now I'm Dr. O.D. I'd like to thank my friends, family, co-workers at Rush University Medical Center and most importantly my steadfast partner and trusted man Mike Ruby. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my friends and family for all the love and support they gave me throughout the years, as well as the faculty for all of their support as I went on. Thank you. I'd like to thank my husband, Ross, and my children, Ben and Amanda, as well as all the rest of my friends and family for their unwavering support, without which I never would have gotten through this. 
thank you to my family, Josh, and this program for me so much opportunity and some of my very best friends. Thanks, Tim, Nicole, Corey, Lauren, and Nellie for helping support me through this uh, journey, which I've enjoyed, and my great friends at Rush. Um, it wouldn't have been the same not going through this with you. You made a lot of fun, thanks. Congratulations, classmates. I can't believe we're here. Thank you to my family and my friends for all the support um, to bring me along the journey. I want to thank Jim, Zeke, and Rex. Uh, the last 17 years, I've been an MSPT, and the next 17, I'll be a DPT. Thanks. Shout out to the class of 2021 and everybody who supported me throughout my journey. I couldn't have done it with everybody that was on my side. Mama, we made it. Shout out to the class of 2021. Congrats, everybody. Uh, I just want to do a quick shout out to my mom, my dad, and everyone who supported me during this time. Thank you so much for your support. I couldn't have done it without you. I just want to give a quick shout out to my family, friends, and all my classmates that helped me through this journey. Couldn't have done it without them. Just wanted to thank everyone that helped me get to this point. Uh, I love you and congrats class of 2021. We made it. Thank you to my mom, my dad, my brother, Eric, my friends and family, but mostly my dog. I want to thank my mom, my dad, my sisters, Mitch, of course, my dog, Olive, all my family and friends for all your support throughout the years. Shout out to my friends, my family, my parents especially, and my classmates and all my professors. Couldn't have done it without you guys.